Recently, I had an opportunity to shoot an interview with my FX30. I met up with John Ishii, who's a well-known photojournalist who lives in Malaysia. On my trip over to Malaysia, we connected and we decided it would be a good idea to gather some knowledge from John. That was my whole purpose. He's been shooting for a long period of time. I met him through AP Studios on one of the live stream. And I thought it was a good idea now that we've met face to face to kind of get some information from John about his past. Nowadays we hear about, you know, the younger YouTubers who are out there, they get a lot more attention than people who are giants in their field. People who have been shooting for years, have a lot of knowledge and information they can share the world. Granted today, a lot of people are doing video, but we still have a lot of people who shoot in photos and want to hear about, you know, some of the people who've been there before them, what they've done. The way I see it is the pioneers, those that came before us who basically charted the course for those of us who are coming later on to follow. When we decided that we were gonna do the interview, I figured it would be best if I used the Sony cameras. I wanted to use the FX30 because it is a cinema-based camera and I wanted to test out the functionality of what it would be like in an interview setting. I also set up the A7R5 as a backup and I wanted to get audio from that camera as well, just in case something kind of went flaky with this one. The setup was basically having the FX30 as the main camera and having the A7R5 off to the side, basically capturing both of us and pulling in the audio as well. I opted to use lavalier mics because I was closer. The fan that was overhead was generating some volume, so I wanted to, you know, mitigate that somewhat by using the lavalier and keeping everything closer. Needless to say, the audio turned out pretty well. If you watch the video, you've seen how everything came out. Everything flowed. So I wanted to show you guys a bit of a behind the scenes and what was happening. And some of these images that you're watching now is showing me testing out the audio. Once I set up the camera, I wanted to make sure the audio and everything was working fine. So I used the microphones by itself just testing the wireless system, making sure they were syncing up, they were set to the right settings. Stereo, mono, change the settings around just to make sure things were looking good. John was asking questions while I was setting up and I was explaining things to him. He's more for the guy who's trying to do video. So it's like a learning process for him, as well as me getting information from him about photography and so on. Now, after the audio portion, we went to make sure that our setting where we sit, light and everything was fine. What I loved about the situation was that the natural light from the big door that he had in the balcony provided more than enough for us to be able to film with that. I was a bit worried that we may have to sit outside or go someplace else. The initial plan was to sit in a park or in a coffee shop. And if you want to have a good setup inside a public space, you're going to have to get permission first and foremost and using a tabletop tripod would have been okay, but I think it'd probably be a little bit too cramped and too much background noise and distraction. So doing this in John's living room worked out to be the better option. The interview went well. If you watch the video, you've seen what it's like. Things flowed up really well. It was smooth. The conversation went back and forth very easily. John was easy to talk to, which made everything so much better. The FX30, the images that came out of it on the audio, both were actually useful and I didn't have to do too much tweaking from that front. As far as the video, I did use S-Log3 because I wanted to test myself on that one. I've been shooting a lot of things in S-Log3 and doing some slight edits to you know, get better at understand how the camera works to use this functionality from it. And hopefully you guys like what you've seen. It's just a you know normal setting, but balancing out the light, color correcting it, took a little bit of time. Plus the video was almost an hour. Didn't realize we talked for so much, but you know the, I wanted to do like a one shot and done. I think it was one time that we actually stopped the camera in between. Um, there was something the focus was off. I didn't realize until later on, but my wife was thought that something was happening with the audio. So we had stopped and checked that everything was fine. 
Um, I'm pretty sure in the first video you may have noticed that I've done a little bit of um, sharpening to kind of get things back in focus. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe the screen was touched, who knows. I did notice recording some things the last few days that I look at the monitor and it looks out of focus. I look at the screen and it says MF, which means manual focus. Don't know what's really going on there. That's been happening a few times. Is it an issue with the camera? I can't say for sure. Is it something with the lens? Because I'm using the 16 to 35 f4. It seems as though when I'm setting up and the camera is on, by the time I get it right to sit in, for some unknown reason, it's in manual focus. Weird. But anyhow, things turn out very well in the shoot, and I enjoy that. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about the setup and how everything turned out for the video. I know some of you probably haven't watched the video yet, but if you haven't, please watch it and come back and let me know in this video comment section. What do you think? What do you like? What could I improve? The FX30, I want to say it's a great camera. There are a lot of inaccurate information about this camera out in the market. YouTube is full of a lot of people just putting out videos about stuff and not actually being accurate about it. I saw one video the other day that someone mentioned that it doesn't shoot raw. And he did two videos on his channel and said that the camera doesn't shoot raw. As far as photos, it does, but you know. There are a lot of people who are interested in this camera, but they're hearing conflicting information. Someone once came to my channel and made a comment that there was something that was wrong with what I said because other channels said something different. Like as someone who owns the camera, I do my best to give correct information. If you watch my previous videos about this camera, you can tell I wasn't the most positive about it when I first got it. I wanted to use it, yes, because in my mind it was a vlogging camera, but comparing it to my Nikon, yeah, it didn't quite hold up in my eyes, but the more I start to use it to find out the functionalities in the feature, the better I've gotten to understand it. I'm getting good quality videos out of it. Tested it in low light, works great. Watch those videos too. It's just overall a really great camera. While I got it for vlogging purposes, this camera does more than just vlog. It's a cinema camera. Guys, if you're looking for a camera that you wanna film YouTube videos with, this will be great. If you're someone who can't afford the more expensive cameras, you want something that you can grow with, the FX30 is your camera. It starts out with a crop sensor, but it's so much more than just a sensor that can't do well in low light, as people would like to say. There's a video out there from Sony about how to use the Cine EI features. I've dropped that link in so many people's channels who've been putting out information about the dual-based ISO. It doesn't work very well. I'll put one in my comment section as well. So if you watch the video and you want to learn more about that, you can watch that video and learn from Sony, not me, horses mob basically, how this camera is supposed to be used and how to get the best out of it. I'm going to close out the video and I want to thank everyone for watching. Again, hopefully you enjoyed the interview video with John. If you'd like to see more of that, drop some notes in the comment. If I get enough people watching those videos, I'll consider doing some more. There are other photographers I met in Malaysia that were really knowledgeable. There's one guy at the camera shop. He, he knows just about everything about every camera. I would have loved to interview him, but we didn't have time to do it. But if you guys are really interested in hearing about this, I will make a trip over there at some point in the future and we'll get that set up. Thanks for watching again. Stay tuned for the next video.